Tom Brady informed the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that he is retiring, and this time it's for real. Diving into that and more right here on Locked on Bucks. Let's go. Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and the 10 Tampa Bay Plus app. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, Deputy Editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com, joined by my co-host, Mr. David Harrison. You can find his coverage over at Sports Illustrated's BucksGameDay.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at D Harrison82. All right, guys, this live episode of Locked On Bucks is brought to you today by Ultimate Football GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your own football franchise, then this is the game for you. And they're going to be around with us for a while because you guys have been absolutely amazing supporting this game and hopefully enjoying the game as well. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you can by just visiting ultimate-gm.com or look it up on your app store. Our, list, our listeners, you get a 100% free boost to your franchise. So make sure you use that because that bad boy is valuable when using the promo code locked on all caps, all one word inside the game. We thank them. And of course, we thank you again for making us your first listen of the day on today's episode. The timing of Tom Brady's retirement is suspiciously significant. I'm going to tell you why. And we're going to talk about why the heir to Brady's throne may already be on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster. But first, Tom Brady is retired, and this time it's real. It's really real, James, because Tom Brady said so. And we have to go back to kind of some of his comments towards the end of the regular season where he said that last time, looking in retrospect, he kind of made the decision a little bit hurried, hurriedly. Hurriedly? He was hurried in making his decision, and he realizes after the fact that that's probably not really the best way to go about doing this so this time around he was going to take his time he was going to make his decision kind of at his own speed and at his own pace even going as far on his own podcast which is a little bit weird to be on your own podcast and have your host which i, I have to imagine there's some sort of discussion of what we're going to talk about and kind of lash out i'm sure and again it was all in fun and jim gray i'm sure took it that way of saying like once i know what i'm going to do i'll actually do it which i'm paraphrasing of course because we're a family show but James Tom Brady has decided what he's going to do. He has done it. He is retiring. And no, there's no unretirement coming. No, and and the irony of of him making that decision in such a hurry is that he announced his retirement on the exact same day last year. But when you go back and you remember how that all went down, it wasn't Brady that said it first. It was Adam Schefter that said it first. And then you had the interviews on the radio with with Tom Brady's dad saying you know he hasn't said anything I don't know where this report is coming from and more and more people started to talk about how he was going to retire then Tom finally made the announcement this time he woke up he called the Buccaneers brass at six o'clock in the morning made the video and became the first one to announce it and David I remember you and I even joked when it all went down last year that Tom Brady is the type of player that because he didn't get to control the own, you know, his own retirement announcement, he was going to come back for one year just to spite Adam Schefter for leaking that, that report out early. This time, Tom Brady is in control of his retirement announcement. He said that he wasn't going to make it uh, an emotional or long-winded because he already did that once, but you could tell he was emotional in the video when he thanked his family. He thanked his uh, his teammates, he thanked his fans, he thanked his coaches. Um, he always said that he wanted to play until he was 45. And the way he played this past season, he could play until he was 47, 48. Uh, we, we, deal, we did still believe that in the back of our minds that 
he was probably going to play this coming year. And more than likely it was going to be for the Buccaneers. You know, to us, it was kind of down to, to two teams. Yep. And uh, I think that was the, the general consensus, but yeah, he's, he's the one in control. He's the one that made the initial announcement. So there's no question to me this time that it's, it's over for the yep. greatest quarterback that we will ever see play the Buccaneers greatest quarterback in franchise history after just three years. Uh, the dude did it all. And, and maybe now some of the haters that I have seen on, on social media celebrating this retirement will start to get to the point where they look back and they're like, you know what? It was pretty cool that we got to watch him play. Yeah. I mean, look, there, there's a lot to unpack there. You know what I mean? And like, I think that, I think the significance of the fact that this video was just like him, uh, you know, like it wasn't like, you know, that this big like Hollywood type production. And I, and I, I just kind of wondered, and I, I wondered like, you know, he did a lot of things with like a lot of production value and that might be honestly how it leaked in the first place, the first time. Cause you know, that takes effort. That takes a staff that takes people working in concert with each other. And the cha the more people are involved, the more chances somebody says something to the wrong person, probably not maliciously, but just kind of the, the nature of people. Um, and so I wonder how much of an impact that really had, but then, but I also look at it like, you know, it, it's a little ironic because last year we were like, well, we don't think he's probably going to retire. So here's probably what's going to happen. And then this year, the, like you said, the entire conversation has been, well, when he comes back, who's he coming back to? So, you know, it's just, it's just kind of the way that the news cycle works um, and just shows how much like people are going to say, like, we saw this coming and we knew that we all, everybody knows it's an opera or a potential, you know, uh, opportunity or a potential thing that could work. But every single person to a T has been talking more about where he would play versus if he would play. So it just kind of shows how much Tom really took control of his own fate. And as far as people who would like would celebrate, you know, Tom not being with the team anymore, like it's. It's hard to expect loyalty from a mercenary. We've had this conversation already. Like when the, when the conversations of him going to the Dolphins and the tampering and all this stuff came up, like some people were mad. And we kind of said, like, look, Tom Brady never came here out of love. He came here because he was a mercenary. He said, I want to kill another Lombardi trophy and put it on my and mount it on my wall. And you're going to help me get there. Um, so this was never about loyalty. So I don't, I don't know. I don't necessarily want to shade fans for, you know, if you don't feel a certain amount of loyalty to Tom Brady, I think that's fair. You know what I mean? Um, but I do hope that uh, as Bucks fans, you know, get deeper into it, at least like some somewhat relish the fact that the greatest quarterback of all time, for whatever reason, did at one point choose your favorite team to play for lead and lead to a Super Bowl. Um, and so, so I do hope that, you know, for people who are celebrating the departure of Tom Brady, that eventually some appreciation does sink in because it's it's a good time for the franchise. And and I think that should be significant in the hearts of the fans. Yeah, well, and, and I'm sure there is, you know, we know there is a a group of, of Buccaneers fans that were ready to see Brady move on and ready to see him retire. The, the people that I actually were referring to were Falcons fans, uh, Colts fans, you know, the, the, the people that have hated Tom Brady for years and years and years celebrating the fact that he can't hurt them anymore. Um, but again, you, you go back and it's, you know, we grew up watching football in an incredible era where we got to watch greatness like Tom Brady, like Peyton Manning, like Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, LaDainian Tomlinson, you know, the list goes on and on and on. It was a special, special era of football that Tom Brady played during past and and into a new incredible exciting era so hats off to the guy you know 23 years in the national football league playing uh until he was 45 years old more lombardi trophies for himself than any other franchise has uh in the in the history of the nfl so it's it's been an incredible career but now the question david is where do the bucks go from here because there is some fallout now that first domino has fallen and it's time to start looking at what direction the Buccaneers can go in. And we break that down for you coming up next here on locked on bucks. This episode of locked on bucks is brought to you in part by ultimate football GM ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise where well, your dream can come true and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. 
You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft, all the ups and downs of a season. All of this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline, so you can play on the go as you want to, when you want to. I enjoyed our little league competition. I still think it was it was fixed because I was way better of a GM than my players would like to give me credit for, but... For those of you watching that want to give this thing a shot, it really is a lot of fun. You can kill a lot of time doing it. So check it out and do so by going and getting your 100% free boost to your franchise when you use the promo code Locked On, all caps, all one word, in the game store. That's Locked On, all caps, all one word. So make sure you check that out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app store. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. All right, guys, thanks again for making Locked On Bucks first listener, first view every single day. Locked On is also at the Senior Bowl. That's where I am sitting in this lovely couch in this lovely, lovely living room in Mobile, Alabama. So get the inside analysis from all of the hosts, not just myself, we've got a dozen or more uh, hosts here on ground in Mobile covering the next the NFL's next generation uh, in college. Find out which NFL draft boards these players are going to be climbing all in one location. Subscribe to Locked On NFL Draft for nightly live shows from the Senior Bowl on Wednesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So where do the Buccaneers go from here? Well, just so happens that one of the people uh, staying here in Mobile with me is locked on Gators host Brandon Olson and Brandon shortly after the news broke told me that Kyle Trash should be the man to get first crack at replacing Tom Brady because the bottom line is the Buccaneers drafted Kyle Trask in the second round of the NFL draft for a reason that reason was to compete to replace Brady it was never about just sliding Kyle Trask and saying you are the next Buccaneers starting quarterback but it was about having a young quarterback to develop for a year two years however much time you had and then eventually giving Kyle Trask the opportunity to compete. Well, that opportunity has arrived. Tom Brady's retirement has presented that opportunity. And if the Buccaneers don't follow through, that was your plan. So the Buccaneers don't follow through with that plan. And again, I know the head coach is different, right? But the GM is still here. The coach that's here was on that coaching staff. I'm not saying Todd has to own that strategy, I suppose, right? That was more of a Bruce Aaron's Jason Light uh, fixture. But if the Buccaneers as an organization don't now follow through with that plan and at least have the opportunity for Kyle Trask to maybe show that he's more of a gamer because we've had a lot of practice exposure to him that did not go well, but show that he can be a gamer in his third season, even if he's not the the, the most uh, uh, prolific pa- practice quarterback that we've ever seen, then basically they're admitting minimum. We're, best case scenario, they're admitting that the plan to do that in the first place was flawed from the beginning. Yeah, I, I certainly understand that sentiment. And, and look, you know, Kyle Trask is – possibly going to get the opportunity to compete for the starting job. He's the only quarterback that the Bucs have under contract. So right now he is the starter. He is the number one and only quarterback that the Buccaneers have. So he may, he may get that shot. There may be stuff like you said that we haven't seen him do when we've been there in person and had the opportunity to watch him. But at the same time, the, opportunities that he got in the preseason really didn't instill a a ton of confidence. The opportunity that he got in the regular season against the Atlanta Falcons didn't really instill a whole lot of confidence. So you take a look at, at Trask being a potential option and maybe, maybe they're using Kyle Trask as their own in-house bridge quarterback to get through the salary cap issues that they have and be able to have the opportunity to draft a quarterback next year. That's certainly possible. At the same time, Jason over at over the cap, I I I apologize. I don't know his last name on Twitter. He's Jason underscore OTC. Uh, He says the Brady's retirement will actually free up about $23 million in cap space for the Buccaneers uh, that they can move towards next year when the cap is going to go up again. 
you, it gives you a little bit more wiggle room. And so Brady is really only going to only going to cost the Buccaneers about $11 million in dead cap space this season. So that, that gives the Bucs that extra wiggle room to be able to go out and, and potentially find a quarterback that they can continue to compete with, that they can continue to keep all of this talent around and be able to, to fight to win another NFC South title against a, a division that's really not all that impressive right now. Of course, things are going to change through free agency, through the draft. You have a change at, at head coach in Carolina. Who knows what the Saints are doing at quarterback? The Falcons believe they found their quarterback in the future. So a lot of things can change. But right now, if you go out and you find a Derek Carr yeah. and you bring him into Tampa. And David, I know you're a big fan of Derek Carr. I know some of our viewers and listeners are probably saying, are you kidding me? Did you see what he did with the Raiders? That was a, a rocky relationship from the jump. But Derek Carr has three years left on his deal. And yeah. he's got he's got cap hits of 35 44 and 43 million dollars if the bucks want to explore a trade but i don't see too many teams lining up to try to trade for Derek carr give him that much money take on that big of a cap hit while also giving away draft compensation the raiders have an out they right. can cut him and only have 5.625 million in dead cap for their salary cap this year and then it's done it's over with and he's got a bonus that's going to hit in two weeks. So you look for Derek Carr to likely be cut, and you bring him in here. And, and again, you and I have been fans of Derek Carr for a while. We know he can play better than he did last year. And he's a guy that can keep the Bucs atop the NFC South. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I do like Derek Carr, right? And and, and I want to make something clear. There's a difference between liking a guy and thinking a guy is like the greatest quarterback in the league today or ever. And I don't think Derek Carr is that. Like Derek Carr is not going to come to Tampa and compete for an MVP uh, award. I don't believe that would be the case, right? I would, I would be legitimately, you know, that, that would, that would exceed my expectations. I'll just say that. Um, but I do think that with Derek Carr as a veteran option where he goes, he's going to start. Like he wants to find a place to start. So he, he's, he's got a little bit of control over where he goes, even if he gets traded. So I don't know that he agrees to a trade to a team that's going to want him to compete for a starting job. He's gonna want to got. He's gonna want to go to a place that says you're our number one guy. You're coming in to be our leader. Um, if he becomes a free agent, which is what a lot of people are expecting to actually happen, I I'm one of those people. Um, then I think that he wants to sign somewhere that has the same, you know, uh, uh, idea. But like Sean King said when when we had him on the show last week, like you have had Kyle Trask, you know who Kyle Trask is more than anybody else. If you're the Buccaneers, so if you don't believe that he can help you win a championship, not put you on the on his back. And carry you to it. just be a part, be a Trent Dofer, be a Brad Johnson. If he can't be that guy, then you need to go find that guy. And I think Derek Carr is the closest thing to that guy. Jimmy Garoppolo is obviously another name uh, to potentially look for, depending on what the Niners do. If Trey Lance becomes available, you know, there's there's hot and cold takes on him as well as a future NFL quarterback. Um, but another quarterback that's going to about to rise to prominence and already kind of is James is Anthony Richardson. And there are going to be a lot of Bucks fans that do not want to see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft a second Gators quarterback. But I mean, when you look at the way the draft boards are going, he is going to be the most likely candidate to be available when the Buccaneers are picking. So unless they push all the chips in, go all in, trade up for CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, you know, Will Levis, which I mean, the, the amount you're going to have to pay, it's not just going all in. Like you might as well just move Tampa to the London Monarchs, you know what I mean? Like you're going to sell literally the house and the ship and everything with it. Um, so I don't see that happening, but Anthony Richardson is going to be a guy. Um, recently, Trevor Sikama, Bucks fans know and love Trevor. He mocked Anthony Richardson to the Washington Commanders at pick number 16. Buccaneers aren't that far behind. I don't think the Commanders are drafting quarterback in the first round as of right now. That could change. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, but if the Commanders don't, I mean, if he's there at 16, He'd most certainly be there at 19. Or if the Bucs really want him, moving up to 17 from 19 is not difficult at all. So they could absolutely make that war. Maybe the Bucs and Commander swap, and they move up to 16 and take him there. Either way, a lot of Cam Newton uh, comparisons, which may or may not be misguided. I would say that you know Bucks fans who want to know more about Anthony Richardson, whether you're a Gator fan or you're just a Bucks fan curious about it, obviously check out Brandon uh, at Locked On Gators. He'll give you uh, the 411 on that. I can... Uh, uh, 
kind of tell you that Brandon is connected with people who are connected with AR. He's keeping track of AR's development as the draft. All right. Well, the timing of Brady's retirement is not insignificant. And if you're mad, well, then you just have one more reason to hate Sean Payton. That is coming up right here on Locked on Bucks. Today's episode of Locked on Bucks is brought to you in part by one of our newest and coolest sponsors. And that, of course, is FanDuel. And this year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. FanDuel is the one that I go to all the time, so close to hitting that parlay. Just needed that Joe Burrow rushing touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and very easy to use. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Today's episode of Locked On Bucks is also brought to you in part by your craving for a healthy treat. Looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all of the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year, but I have a sweet tooth. After meals, I want something sweet. Why not have something sweet and healthy with our friends at Built Bar? Seriously, they're, they're so delicious, you won't think that they're good for you. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. Not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better is that they are healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait for the mailman to bring you a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. wrapping things up here on a live Tom Brady retirement edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. So, David, we talked about it a little bit uh, in, in segment one and, you know, talked about the timing of it. Last year, it was, it was uncovered by Adam Schefter and Tom Brady went on to retire on February 1st of last year. Okay. He said he did it in a hurry, took it back. Now, on February 1st of mm -hmm. this year, he retires again. He controls the narrative. He controls everything. But after finishing a 2022 season where, yes, you won the division, yes, you made the playoffs, but you finished with a losing record, mm -hmm. your undefeated streak against the Dallas Cowboys comes to an end at home in the playoffs. Why now? Um, there's one of two reasons, and I will let our viewers, listeners, and yourself even decide which one they think is more likely. One option is... Tom Brady dislikes how much I like the senior bowl and does not want me to have a peaceful time in Mobile, Alabama, which by the way, is not peaceful. Like it's nonstop work. And then he was like, you know what? You need more. Mm -hmm. That's option one. That's, that's a potential option. And I think a serious candidate. The other option is that what we've been talking about all off season and that he and Sean Payton, we're going to want to make another run at this together to play together was factual. And Sean Payton being traded to the Denver Broncos because I think surprisingly enough to some people, the suitors for Sean Payton dried up faster than they actually ever built up. Like, I, like, like 
entering the the coaching carousel. I think Sean Payton was viewed to be like the, the crown jewel of the coaching carousel. And in reality, he wasn't the primary choice for a lot of teams. And I don't know that he was a primary choice for any team. Obviously, he wasn't the primary choice for Houston. Um, if you believe Ian Rappaport, he wasn't the primary choice in Denver. If you believe Adam Schefter after the fact, he was always the primary choice. I'll let you make that decision. I think you know where I lie on that um, if you watch this show on a consistent basis. Um, and Sean going to Denver, like the immediate thing is, okay, you have Russell Wilson. And, you know, is there ways to make it work? Yeah, there's there's ways to make it work. You go into some fantasy land where Tom Brady signs a fully guaranteed deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to get rid of that dead cap, eat some of that money. There is no dead cap in a trade move. Trade him to the Denver Broncos. And the Buccaneers agree to take on Russell Wilson's horrendous contract with a rework, you know, negotiated ahead of time. And the Broncos also carry no dead weight, but then maybe you get a fourth round kicker out of it, you know, for, for giving Sean Payton his quarterback, something like that. But that's not something we see in the National Football League. And and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, not that's that's not a deal you can expect the Bucs to actually agree to. So because of all those reasons, like you know, Sean Payton gets traded. And agrees in terms of the contract, whatever, whatever, to the Denver Broncos. I, I mean, essentially 12 hours later, really. I mean, maybe give or take, but you know, 12 to 18 hours later, Tom Brady is retiring. That's not a coincidence. Sean Payton and Tom Brady, I believe firmly now, like that that was Tom was his intent was to join Sean wherever he went. When that opportunity died, that was the final straw for him saying, I'm not coming back. Maybe the Jets were in the running, but maybe because the Jets I believe we're fully in on getting Aaron Rodgers. Again, that's that's option B, and that went away as well. I I can see the path to that. Yeah. At, at the same time, I don't agree. I don't think that that Sean Payton and Tom Brady were a a package deal as far as Brady's. Well, they obviously weren't a package deal because right, right. they didn't what, go to the same place. What I'm saying is I don't think Tom Brady's uh, prospect for playing in 2023 rested solely on playing with Sean Payton or playing for Sean Payton. No, no, I don't, and I'm not saying solely, but I think that that was like, as it came down to it, Tom was like, okay, Sean, I want to make this work for you. For whatever reason it was, maybe the, the relationship in Tampa just got sour enough that he was like, you know what, I'm bouncing again. Remember, players alike, like we're coming right out saying we don't think Tom is coming back. Maybe New York was an option, but New York's like, hey, Tom, we're going full bore on A-Rod because we got Nathaniel Hackett. We're going to go there. So that option dried up. And then, like I said, the, the Sean Payton thing, you go to Houston and they need a quarterback. But you go to Denver, they don't need a quarterback. Well, and I, I saw Jeff Darlington report that many close to Brady uh, had said that it was either Tampa Bay or retirement for Brady this season. And maybe you're right. Maybe, you know, the relationship had, had soured a little bit or the way that I kind of look at it uh, is Brady. Brady, first and foremost, is a businessman, right? He's going to do what's best for him in, in all facets. He probably saw the writing on the wall for this team. You have 50 plus million dollars over the cap. You have 20 plus pending free agents. You'll you need to basically rebuild the left side of the offensive line. You have defensive shortcomings. All in all, it Brady probably looked at it and said, Is this a team that if I return to next season, I'm going to win a Super Bowl? And the answer was no. I mean, they would have had a chance, but you can't look at their roster as it is right now. You can't look at their cap situation. You can't look at their uh, pending free agents and and say the same way you did when he arrived that they're Super Bowl contenders. You can't say, you know, the way it was two years ago that they were Super Bowl contenders. I, I think ultimately that was probably the biggest reasoning for Tom Brady was that I can come back. I can still do it. We can still win some games, but are we contending for the only reason that I would want to return? And at the end of the day, the answer was no. So with that, I mean, plenty of speculation and I'm sure we're going to get parts of the true story probably later than sooner, 
but things are going to start to trickle out. Someone's going to write a tell all book. Uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to find out the, the reason behind it, you know, at some point, but for now, thanks for a fun three years, Tom. Thanks for Super Bowl. Thanks for uh, making the show a lot more fun to host. And uh, with that, David, we are going to get out of here. Thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view of the day. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. I will be back tomorrow with Carmen Vitale. She is coming back on the show and what timing that is. Uh, I'm sure she will have plenty to say about Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Sun also. Devil legend. Yeah, she will have plenty to say about Tom Brady and the offensive coordinator search. Uh, so make sure you come back for that one. Check out all of David's work over at BucksGameDay.com. Check out mine over at BucksNation.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.